Am I the a-hole for telling my dad it's not my job to make sure my half-siblings have a mom? My parents divorced when I, 17 male, was 5. I'm not sure on why, but part of me has always figured dad cheated on mom because he was with someone suspiciously fast afterward, like that same month fast. But my mom never spoke about it. She just told me both she and dad loved me and that would never change, and I would never have to choose between my parents. My dad was in two live-in relationships post-divorce. When I was 7, he was with Jen and had Luna 9 with her, and then when I was 10, he was with Bree and had Harry 7. Jen and Bree both stopped being moms to their kids, and so my dad became a single full-time parent to my half-siblings. From that point onward, my dad has tried to convince mom she could step up and at least fill some kind of female role model relationship with them. He also corrects me into half-siblings term and says we are just siblings, and if I were to call them just my siblings, it might soften mom's heart to being a female or maternal figure for them. He would ask mom on my behalf to let me have my half-siblings over to her house during her custody time. My parents share equal time with me. He would claim I really missed my half-siblings when I was gone, and he would claim I wanted to spend every holiday with them, etc. None of this is true. I never said those things or implied them. Luna is having a really hard time having no female family members. She has a dad, two half-brothers, and an uncle. So dad has been more forceful about mom's part in all of this lately, and now he is trying to rope me in more. He sat me down recently and told me my half-siblings deserve to have moms, and I could help them with that. I could share my mom and let them feel the love they deserve to feel. He said that I always treated them like lesser siblings. First with always using half, and then with not trying to include them in my life at my mom's house. He told me this is where my role as big brother needs to really take off. In a response, I told him it's not my job, and it has never been my job to provide my half-siblings with a mom. I told him it was on him and their actual moms to do that. And I told him it was sick how he kept trying to rope my mom in. I told him to accept that he only had one kid with mom and she was only obligated to care for me. His answer to that was, I was disappointing him with both my response and lack of concern for the overall well-being of my half-siblings. And he told me to do better, be better and care more about my innocent little siblings. I told my mom about it and she tore dad a new one for putting this on me. She told me I am not wrong for what I said to him, but my uncle also said I could have more compassion for my innocent half-siblings. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You and your mother have no obligation to provide a mom to your half-siblings. Your father is a moron to think his first wife needs to mother his next two children with other women. Your uncle's opinion is irrelevant. None of this is on you. Absolutely. I wish I could upvote this a million times. Your mother seems to have your back and your dad just wants time away from his kids. So if he can palm them off to your mom, it's a win for him. It must be cramping his towel trying to find a fourth woman to have a kid with. It comes down to the fact that dad doesn't view women as individuals. He sees them as interchangeable and based on the services they can provide and the tasks they do, like an employee, not a person and not a partner. This is probably why his relationships eventually fail. OP is not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Your siblings would be fine without a mom if your father stopped pointing out that they're missing out. Dad is just looking for a free babysitter. But dad picked the mother of these kids, and he chose poorly. That's on him, not your mom. It sounds like the best thing for you would be to just go stay with mom. Let dad figure his life out without putting any of it on you. Exactly. It is not OP nor her mother's problem nor fault that two out of three baby mamas of his are trash. And he's garbage for trying to parentify OP and dump his parental responsibilities on his first ex slash OP's mom that has no legit reason, need, nor want to be a mother of his other kids except to OP who is her own. Not the a-hole. I bet OP's mother can't wait till OP is 18. So OP can go no contact on his pathetic butt. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mother that she made her bed? Now she has to lay in it because she is upset that our relationship has changed? Two years ago, my mother started dating a man. Despite expressing our reluctance to meet him, because she was serial dating we did not want to get attached, they forced the situation, making my sisters and me uncomfortable. Shortly after, he began staying over regularly. My mother's personality changed significantly after meeting him. Example, he would make disgusting comments about my mother in front of us, and she would just laugh. About a year ago, they came home after a date, and I, busy with a timed online university assignment, just shouted hello from my desk. 20 minutes later, with not a word to me or my sister, I heard the outside gate slam and them leaving just as I've finished my assignment. I went to check what was happening, but they were already gone. 10 minutes after they left, me and my sister received a horrible voice message, where my mother accused us of being disrespectful and ungrateful and how we do not want her to be happy. 
She also accused us of not greeting either of them when they came inside, though we both did. She left for a week and a half, leaving us with four days worth of food in the freezer and no money for electricity. I ran away to get my sister to school during this week, and also no return date. She wanted us to apologize for being brats, and not greeting them before she would consider coming back. When we finally talked, she insisted that we were disrespectful for not dropping everything and meeting them at the front door to greet them when they came back, and also that neither of us greeted them in any form. Not true, because I did, and I heard my sister greet them as well. They are the ones who did not respond. The house was small, so it is improbable that they didn't hear us. Mind you that this subject was never broached previous to this incident, and in all the years my mother never required us to greet her at the door like a butler. The power was running low, as well as the food, so we bit the bullet and apologized, even though we clearly weren't guilty of what she was accusing us of. My sister was still in high school, and I was a first-year uni student, so neither of us had a financial capacity to keep a household running. During this talk, I informed her that our relationship would never be the same. Recently, my mother questioned why our relationship remains distant. I reminded her that I had warned her about the lasting impact of our argument. Trust in her as a reliable parent was shattered, and I couldn't simply forget the two weeks she abandoned us based on false accusations. While she urged me to move on, I emphasized that she created this distance, and I couldn't force a connection that no longer existed. She's calling me an a-hole for holding this over her head. She says that she's still my mother and deserves forgiveness. But despite her being my mother, I believe the trust has been irreparably damaged. She has given me no indication that she has changed. So, am I the a-hole for what I said? Not the a-hole. Forgiveness is for people who are sorry and show that. She did a horrible thing, yet has no remorse. You should have called the cops and reported her missing and for abandoning your sibling that is a minor. Depending on where they lived and how old they were, not sure if either or both were adults considering they were in union high school. It might not be seen as abandonment, and the police might not have been compelled to do anything. That being said, what their mom did was unforgivable. And you're right, she isn't owed forgiveness just because I'm your mother, especially if she isn't sorry. Not the a-hole. It's so convenient when the aggressor urges the person they hurt to move on, or that forgiveness is good for them. It sounds like she was done being a mom and created the opportunity to take a break and blame it on you. Utterly selfish, and her current argument shows she hasn't changed. Asking to be forgiven without an apology or indication that behavior would change is honestly pretty gross. Tells you everything you need to know about this woman. She says that she's still my mother and deserves forgiveness. Not the a-hole. Forgiveness is never deserved. She can ask for it, or ask what she must do to earn it, but it cannot be simply demanded. Mom apparently thinks that being a parent is a type of exemption from ever needing to apologize. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter, who is facing homelessness, that only her and the baby can move in with me, not her husband? The husband has lived in their apartment for a number of years. The owners recently sold it, and the new ones are moving in. The problem is, rents have gone up dramatically. The rent they are paying is $1,100 for a one-bedroom, which I thought was a lot. But now that I'm trying to help them find a place, most are now going for around $2,000 a month or more. They can't afford this. My daughter knows she is always welcome at home. Granted, a baby complicates things. I wasn't happy about her having a baby. She's young, just turned 22, but I would never deny her housing. However, I can't stand her husband. Let's just call him Aaron for simplicity's sake. I wouldn't invite Aaron over for dinner let alone let him live with me. Aaron's in his mid-30s. Criminal history. Hair-triggered temper. Chronically immature and has one hell of a jealous-slash-possessive streak that has caused strain in the relationship, which I obviously do not approve of. Honestly, when she told me she was pregnant, I finally thought we'd be rid of Aaron. I genuinely thought he's exactly the kind of man to ditch. They've been on and off over and over since she was about 18 or 19. Alas, if anything, it made him cling to her tighter. They had a very rushed wedding and this is their longest stint together without any breakups. Just over a year. There's still been a fair share of dramatics of course, but I'm surprised they've made it this far. Even so, I simply don't want to live with Aaron. I don't like him, I don't want him around me. I'd go above and beyond for my daughter and baby. They can stay as long as they need, but not him. Obviously this has created a rift between my daughter and I. She doesn't want to live separately from Aaron. I told her then she needs to figure out alternative arrangements. Well, their move-out date is rapidly approaching, the 15th of December, and they're still not been able to find a place, and she's panicking. She's been begging me to let them stay. I reiterated my terms. Aaron simply cannot stay here. This led to a lot of tears and some angry words, namely me being an a-hole. 
I can genuinely see why she might think that, but I also have to think about myself and my own sanity. Now for the top comments. If she's adult enough to get pregnant and get married, she's also adult enough to figure things out. Either she accepts her terms as it's her house, or they can stay with the friends or his family. Can't have it both ways. Not the a-hole. Unfortunately, that's not really how things work. I realize that even adults need help from time to time, sometimes a lot of help, and that's okay. Heck, I need help occasionally too. For my own sanity, my helpfulness has its own limits, and I hope my daughter will eventually understand this. I realize they're in a tough spot. The vast majority of her friends live at home still, whereas the ones that don't live with multiple roommates and aren't in a position to help. Aaron, from what I've gathered, doesn't really have family beyond a brother in another province. I know he's done a lot of work on himself, so says my daughter, and has distanced himself a great deal from his former friends. I realize their options are extremely limited, but like I said, my ability to help has its limits. Not the a-hole. It's your house and your life. You are being very generous in your offer. I get that she doesn't want to be separated from her husband, but just because he's worked on himself does not wash away all of the hurt that is caused. Stand strong. Do not be guilted into this. Not the a-hole. Aaron is a one-man communist parade. He comes with so many red flags. Man in his 30s chasing a teenager, criminal record, anger management issues, jealous slash possessive slash controlling. With all those, I would guess if you did allow him in the house and got a front row seat, you'd probably add some form of abuse to the list. But it's valid not to want that in your home, and living with Aaron would probably tank your mental health. In addition, if Aaron hasn't gotten his act together by now, clearly there is something going on, and he's not going to get his act together anytime soon. If you let him in, he's going to try and stay in your house as long as he can, and it's unlikely you leave without a fight. The best thing you could do for your daughter would be getting her to leave Aaron, but unfortunately she's not ready. Keeping this boundary and keeping your home open to her and her child only may in fact work in the long run when she's ready to leave, because she will know she has a safe place open to her. But until then, you're likely going to be kept away from your daughter and grandbaby. Last story. Am I the a-hole for pointing out to my wife that my mother will never be her parent and she needs to stop? My mom, 64, is polite and in general keeps a distance away from my wife, 26. I know my wife has trouble with social interaction and they got off on a horrible start. My wife, I am going to call her Lily, was in foster care and never had a parental figure and she went hard into trying to become my mom's kid. I think it would have happened if my wife let a relationship grow naturally, but she didn't take any of my warnings and bulldozed what my mom wanted. A few examples. She kept calling her mom even after she told her multiple times to call her by her name. Lily would make her uncomfortable, especially when she would ask my mom very personal question or go way too deep. I have talked to her so many times, but she doesn't stop. The family has taken their concerns with me too and have straight up told her to stop. The big turning point was when my mom and her daughters, my sisters, went to visit a deceased family member. It's a tradition between the three of them. Well, Lily heard about it and went. It went very poorly, and my sisters dislike Lily now too. We are invited to events that are still in the family, but the women of the family keep their distance. There is a girl's trip around Christmas, and she wasn't invited. This made my wife very upset and was ranting. I had enough when Lily said she was her kid. I snapped and told her my mother will never be her mom and you need to stop. She ended up crying and now I feel guilty. I just don't know how to get it through her head that she needs to stop. I've talked with her so many times and she is already in therapy. I see both sides of the story here. I feel so sad for your wife but also for your family. I can imagine your wife thinking for a long while that once she gets married she'd finally have parents. It was her last chance to get some, in her mind I'm sure. Unfortunately, that's not always how life works, and I don't think you were the a-hole for saying what you said. It's good that you did. She can finally come to the realization that they're never going to accept her as their own. Hopefully, she'll stop trying so hard. My heart goes out to her, though. Maybe she should see a therapist to help her process her childhood grief. Not the a-hole. She is seeing a therapist. Have you considered doing a joint session together specifically to discuss the relationship with your family? She doesn't want to do that. I have suggested it before, and she would find it uncomfortable for me to be so close to her therapists. She can understand her own feelings of being uncomfortable with you being close to her therapist, but can't understand that your mom is uncomfortable with her forcing closeness on her? That's a little concerning. I know her therapist cannot and should not tell you anything, but you can still tell them things. 
I don't think it would be a bad idea to tell the therapist her concerns. It even asks what you can do to support your wife while still maintaining healthy boundaries in the family. Sure does sound like the therapy isn't at all working, to be honest. I'm sure you could have been gentler to her in telling her what you did, but I'm still going not the a-hole. It sounds like she has been warned and told so many times. At what point does she take responsibility for her actions? I just don't get why she's so fixated on this. It's a miracle that my mother is still polite to her. I know it has to do with foster care, but after being told to stop so many times, I am confused by how she will ignore everyone and keep